In this problem, we have to find the intervals on which this vector-valued function is continuous. So this function will be continuous as long as each of the component functions, so this one and this one, are continuous. So in order for this function here to be continuous, it has to be defined. In other words, whatever is in the square root cannot be negative, so it has to be greater than or equal to zero. And this also has to be defined. In other words, this piece here in the square root has to be non-negative. So in other words, greater than or equal to zero. So this means that this is greater than or equal to two. So both of these conditions have to hold. So there's two ways to get the answer here. Method one is to think about it. Okay, we have t bigger than zero and t bigger than two. Well, if t is bigger than zero, that doesn't mean it's bigger than two. But if it's bigger than 2, it's bigger than 0. So the answer is 2 to infinity. An easier way to get the answer without having to go through all of that thought is to draw a picture. So here's 0, and this is the graph of t greater than or equal to 0. So that's going to be this graph here in green. And then t greater than or equal to 2 so it'll be 2, will be this graph here. And so we want both of them to hold, so we take the intersection. In other words, it's what they have in common, so 2 to infinity. And this would be the set, the interval, on which the vector valued function is continuous. In general, whenever you have square root functions, all you do is you take what's inside the square root, and you set each piece greater than or equal to 0. And then a cheap way to do this is you always take the bigger number. So 2 is bigger than 0, so there's the answer. So for example, just for fun, say you had 2 bigger than 1, and 2 bigger than negative 2, and 2 bigger than 20. Well, you would just take the bigger one, so it would be 20 to infinity. Cheap trick always works every single time. That's it.